Hello! Before we start, let's watch this. Imagine this for a second. One man with total control of billions of people's stolen data, all their secrets, their lives, their futures. I owe it all to Spectre. Spectre showed me that whoever controls the data controls the future. Did you just see Mark Zuckerberg, founder of Facebook, say something unbelievable? Isn't that crazy? But it's fake. This video was created by an artist to highlight the excesses of internet giants. Not so long ago, we could believe a picture could be used as evidence of something. Today, facts and reality can be manipulated by technological tools. To be more aware of these risks, it is important to take stock of new information and communication technologies, also known as ICTs. They have an impact on governments, society and citizens and their relationships. New technologies have always had an impact. The invention of the printing press, radio broadcasting and television. Today, it is the rise of the internet, mobile phones and social networks. Our presentation will look at three questions. What is the situation today? What new opportunities and risks do these technologies create? And finally, how can we support the media and journalists in this new context? 1. What is the situation today? What is the current situation in terms of ICTs, information and communication technologies? First of all, more and more information is being transmitted through digital platforms and social networks. This map shows the rate of internet use throughout the world, the penetration rate, meaning the proportion of the population that has access to the internet. Looking at the extremes, 96% in Norway versus 8% in the DR Congo. Secondly, as you have already noticed, more and more people, including presidents, are using these communication tools. It allows them to bypass the intermediary role traditionally played by the media and journalists. 2. What are the opportunities and risks of ICTs? First, the opportunities. New information and communication technologies are creating space in which the media can broadcast content, but also interact with the audience. Everyone can meet on these virtual platforms to chat and share their opinions. It's not expensive, it's decentralized, it's immediate and global. ICTs can thus open up alternative spaces for expression, even in repressive contexts or when the majority of the media are in the hands of the government authorities. ICTs can also encourage collective actions, like the hashtag MeToo movement, for example. Getting together, creating communities, mobilizing becomes easier as does speaking up. The demonstrations in the Arab Spring, where mobilization first took place online before being expressed in the streets, are also an example of this opportunity. These online collective actions make it possible to demand greater transparency and accountability from those in power. And these are initiatives that the media can then cover and analyze. Investigative journalists can also use ICTs to collaborate, collect information and then relay their predictions through other channels such as social media to reach more citizens. Another example of the potential of ICTs in the Hushaidi platform. It is a platform that makes it possible to collect the needs of the population after an earthquake, for example. The disadvantage of that kind of platform may not sufficiently take into account those who are not online. Which brings us to the challenges and risks of the ICTs. Access to these technologies is not equal for all. 
This is what we call the digital divide. Very often, it goes along the other inequalities as those found in society between rich and poor, urban and rural, young and old, women and men. Information and communication technologies reinforce these inequalities. For example, in the least developed countries, the number of women with access to the internet is on average 31% lower than men. As mentioned above, ICTs offer alternative spaces for exchange for civil society actors, but they also allow for monitoring that is unparalleled in human history. You can listen to an interview on the page of this video of Solange Gernauti, specialist in cybersecurity. Where there is surveillance, there is also often state censorship. Have a look at this Reporter Without Borders map. In red, states that monitors their citizens. In black, states that are enemy of the Internet. Namely, countries that often combine access problem, server filtering, cyber dissident tracking, and online propaganda. In Africa, for example, in 2018, there were 21 Internet blackouts by governments in five countries. Cameroon, Zimbabwe, DRC, Sudan and Gabon. Social networks and internet search tools create the illusion of freedom, of free and uninterrupted access to information. In reality, ICTs are increasingly being used by those who seek to manipulate consumer and citizen behavior. We are all targeted according to our profile, our behaviors, it is a powerful tool for those who seek to exploit cultural and social decisions and divisions. We saw at the beginning this video where sound and image can be manipulated. Seeing a picture or a video no longer proves anything. Google, Facebook and other big internet companies developed what we call algorithms. These algorithms mainly offer us information that supports our prejudices and beliefs. They hold us in what are called informational bubbles. I suggest you watch the video on our page that explains to teenagers how they are locked in their beliefs by these algorithms. The logic behind these algorithms is simple. You have to generate clicks. So, the goal is to push you towards what you like. Here, American Democrats on the left, Republicans on the right. We see that the technologies favor the polarization of opinions. It is often the most extreme profiles that are the most vocal and visible on social networks. This polarization is also reflected in the media landscape. First example, this study by MIT and Harvard shows how the media landscape in the United States is polarized between a centrist and liberal bloc on the one hand and a conservative bloc on the other. A second example, Cambridge Analytica, at the origin of a major scandal during the Brexit. This company has shown that by collecting Facebook data, a political party can easily gather information on the electorate and then target people according to their profile, their personality, to then better manipulate them. This manipulation has played a major role in the results of the 2016 referendum in the UK. To know more, please watch the TED conference on Facebook's role in Brexit and the threat to democracy on our page. 3. What to do and why support media and journalists in this new context? As you can see, in the face of these phenomena, there is an increased need for professionalism and truthful and factual reporting. More than ever, media must stick to the facts. They must clearly differentiate between facts and opinions sticking to a strict journalistic code of ethics.
But it also means evolving with the times and making better use of new information technologies to collaborate and collect information involving citizens and being aware of the risks of online activities. Information consumers, on the other hand, must demonstrate individual responsibility too. Education on the media and information is necessary to overcome information bubbles and foster dialogue between various parts of society. In summary, we need to remember ICTs have a great impact on the evolutions of societies. Citizens and users of the ICTs have an important responsibility about their behaviors online. Traditional media and journalism must, more than ever before, defend and protect the values of professionalism and ethics. It is therefore necessary to enable journalists to do their job properly and promote media literacy.